All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our evening service. We are Facebook friends. We're honored to have you also joining us. Thank you. If you're able to stand, physically, if you're able, stand and grab your hymn book. You should have a hymn book in front of you. Grab your hymn book and turn to page 440. Page 440. Thanks to God. That's the title of the hymn tonight, the song, Thanks to God. And I think as God's people, I understand the unsaved crowd. They're ungrateful. I understand that. That's the characteristic of an unsaved person. They're full of ingratitude. But God's people should be grateful. God's people should be full of thanksgiving and praise. Amen? Yes, we should, we should be overflowing with thanksgiving. God's people ought to, ought to be the most thankful people. In the world, I think it's First Thessalonians 5:18. Uh, uh, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. That's the will of God. So we ought to be grateful. Let's let's thank the Lord. Right? Everybody that has breath tonight, let's give God the glory. Amen. Let's thank. Let's give Him thanks for saving us, for victory in Jesus, for daily blessings. For his daily protection, for joy, Amen. for the peace that passes all understanding, Amen. for heaven. Amen? I, mean, I could just go on, but we'll stop right there and we'll let Jared take over with the song. All right? Thanks to God. seated for our second hymn this evening, which is Count Your Blessings, number 439. Hymn number 439, Count Your Blessings.
your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Do that every day, man. It'll change your life. Take some time every day to count his blessings and name them one. It will change your life. It will. I challenge you to do that. We still got some calendars there. So if anybody didn't grab a calendar, we got the calendar. They're beautiful calendars. They have scriptures on them. And it's the Bible version that we use, King James Bible. So uh they're free, so if you didn't get a chance to grab one, maybe you forgot, you still have another shot tonight. And then uh, Wednesday, Thursday is Thanksgiving, right, Lord willing. So we're going to, after the service here, we're going to raffle uh, two turkeys, two nice-sized turkeys. We're going to raffle them, so we're going to have two winners. And then after that, we go downstairs, and everybody here is going to receive a Christmas gift from the church. I mean... Thanksgiving. Thank you, Diane. You'll get one for Christmas, too, but Thanksgiving. I'm moving too fast, right? So uh, Thanksgiving gift, everybody is going to receive one downstairs. So after the service, if you go downstairs uh, and receive our, our Thanksgiving gift from the church. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, it's good to see Daniel tonight. Daniel, God bless you. Good to see Daniel. Daniel is our... our uh, uh, he's a brother in Christ, amen? He gave his heart to Jesus Christ last Wednesday with tears in his eyes, tears of joy. And he's here tonight. What a blessing that is. Praise the Lord. And Daniel is uh, physically second time here, but he's been with us for the past few months on, on Facebook live streaming. But uh, he said, I, I just want to go there. And um, don't forget to greet Daniel, shake his hand. And uh, what a blessing to have Daniel here tonight. So, man, will you come and we'll pray for the offering? Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the songs, spirit to song, the hymns. Lord, and I, I pray that uh, you will bless the offering, Lord. You love a cheerful giver. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And Lord, and I just pray that you would just bless uh, the offering and bless the message that follow. We need your presence, Lord. We invite you here. We cover your presence. Lord, uh, where two or three are gathered together in your name, you're in the midst of us. And that's why we're here. So I pray that we, we the Holy Spirit, uh, will take control of the service. There will be no distractions, Lord, and that you, we just, you speak to our hearts. Lord, we just want to love on you. We want to glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen.
praise the Lord. Please stand if you're able for our third hymn this evening, which is Amazing Grace, hymn number 244. 244, Amazing Grace. <coughs> standing for the reading of God's word of course which is in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 please turn there now if you have your bibles with you hopefully you do 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and just looking at verse 18 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and in verse 18 the word of God reads in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Please be seated. All right. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you all. My brother, good to see you. Amen. Dylan, good to see you. And look, front seat, front action here. Praise the Lord, Dylan. Amen. Title of my message, I'm going to just prepare us for Thanksgiving. Thursday, Lord willing, is Thanksgiving. And I'll bring another message Wednesday night on Thanksgiving also. So tonight I want to talk to you about reasons to be grateful. Reasons to be grateful. And I want to give you uh, about seven reasons to be grateful. And I think God's people ought to be the most grateful people on, on this planet Earth. Amen? God's people, that should be the, that's the characteristic of a safe person. He's full of gratitude. He's full of thanksgiving. So let's pray. Father, bless the word of God. Help me to put the emphasis where it's needed, Lord. And Lord, I pray that we leave out of here, be more grateful, more full of thanksgiving. Lord, uh, more praise and honor and glory. And Lord, and, and to, to your name. Dear God, because uh, none of us deserve your blessings. We all deserve hell. But we're going to continue to believe that you want to bless us, Lord, because that's your nature. You're a good God. You're a gracious God. You're a loving God. You're a merciful God. Lord, you're, you're, uh, your mercies are new every morning. You daily loaded us with your benefits. 
And Lord, may we acknowledge that and may we count your blessings and name them one by one. Lord, help me to be a blessing. Empower me and the listener. In Jesus' name, amen. One day a preacher was riding on a train and he saw a well-dressed man in the train. It was a couple and his wife was magnificently well-dressed also. She had real expensive fine jewelry and he wanted it, but the, the wife, he noticed that she was complaining about everything. She was complaining about the train ride. She was complaining about the weather. She was complaining about the uh, food, the news, the, uh, the, the, the train con uh, 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 conductor, and he wanted to engage in a conversation with that couple. So he approached the husband and said, introduce himself, and he said, I was just wondering, what, what do you do for a living? You know, and then he told him what, what he does for a living, the kind of business he's involved. And then he said, how about your wife? What, what does she do? Oh, she's in the manufacturing business, he replied. She's in the manufacturing business. She's manufactured her own unhappiness, her own misery. And you know, there's a lot of people like that today. They manufacture their own unhappiness. They manufacture their own misery because they fail to be grateful. And I believe that the attitude of gratitude is a choice. We must choose to be grateful or we must choose to be ungrateful. That's, a, that's an attitude, that's a choice. We must choose to be grateful or we must choose to be ungrateful. And you and I, tonight or every day, we, you and I are safe people. We could go through the alphabet from A through Z. And every letter, I promise you, you go from A through Z, every letter, we could find a blessing with each letter. Amen? There, there's, we need to count our blessings and name the one more. We could go through A through Z. I mean, I think of the letter A. I'm thankful that I have a good appetite. I like to eat. I mean, don't compete with me because I like to eat. I do it, and I'm thankful for the good appetite that I have. I do have a good appetite, and I thank the Lord for that. There's so many people that don't struggle with the good appetite that I have. I'm in the seafood diet. I think it was Brother Dave yesterday, or not yesterday, on Friday. All that good food, brother. It was like a buffet everywhere. And uh, you could go back for second and thirds. And then he said, what are you going to, you were talking while we are in the line, like the ladies first. And then he, uh, he said, what are you going to, any, any, what's the strategy? Uh, anything you go out, I say, I, I, I'm in the seafood diet. Everything I see, I'm going to eat. Amen. I mean, look, we could go through the, through the alphabet letter from a, a appetite. I think of the letter B. I, I'm thankful that I have a bed to sleep on and a comfortable bed. Amen? I'm thinking of the letter C. I'm, th I'm thankful that I'm cancer-free. Amen? By the grace of God, I'm cancer-free. I think of the letter D. I'm, I, I'm glad that I'm not, I'm not disabled. I'm not in a wheelchair. Uh, I'm not dead. I'm alive. Breathing God's air, enjoying the abundant life. Amen? I mean, we could just go on to the alphabet. There's something to be thankful for. Something to be thankful for. A man by the name of Matthew Henry, you know, the, 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 the Bible commentary, by, by the way, you should, uh, every Christian should have a Matthew Henry commentary. They're awesome. They're very awesome. You, you could get a lot out of the Matthew Henry commentators, commentary, but the story is told that Matthew Henry one time was robbed, and he wrote a daily journal. He was robbed one time in his journal. He wrote down these words after, he's been, after he was being robbed and mugged uh, right in the back alley, in, in, in a dark alley in London. And he said this in his journey after he was robbed. He said this. He said, let me... He said, number one, uh, be thank I'm thankful that I was never robbed before. He said, number one, I'm thankful that I was never robbed before. He said, number two, because although they took my purse, they did not take my life. He said, number three, although because they took my all, it wasn't much. Number four, because it was I who was, ro who was robbed and not I who robbed. And you know, I kind of love that attitude. 
I love that perspective, amen? This guy chose to be grateful. He chose to manufacture happiness because he chose to be grateful in everything. Amen? And that's what we need to do to save people. And I thought about that. I thought about his, his great attitude, his positive attitude, his great positive perspective. And would to God that I have that kind of attitude of gratitude and that kind of positive perspective. That's what I want to have. I want to have that kind of, I want to see good in everything, even in the bad. I want to see God's hand because God's hand is all over our circumstances. Amen? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. There's no oops in the Christian life. Amen? My time, the psalmist says, are in his hands. Again, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Somebody say this. Somebody said, if you cannot be thankful for what you receive, be thankful for what you escape. I like that. I kind of love that. Be thankful right now, tonight. I know we all got problems. I know that, but be thankful right now that if you're saved this morning, you're not in hell. Amen? Be thankful that you're not in hell if you're safe. Be thankful that you're safe today, that you are locked out of hell. Amen? I'm thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful for a lot of things, and God knows my heart that every day I thank him for blessing. I name them one by one. But the, the, the first blessing out of all, I said, Lord, thank you for the great salvation that you gave me. I don't deserve it. I deserve hell. I'm locked out of hell. Amen? I am... Um, Powerfully secure in Christ because John 10 28 Jesus says and I give unto them it was given you didn't earn it eternal life Not temporary life eternal life and they should never perish Neither should any man pluck them out of my hand That's pretty powerful. I'm, I'm pretty uh, powerfully kept secure. I Believe in the eternal security of the believer because I'm held by Christ's powerful hand Nobody's more powerful than Jesus. I might let go but he will never let go because he says, nobody could pluck me out of his hand. Not even myself. Nothing, no sin, nothing could snatch me out of Christ's hand. Praise the Lord for that. I don't deserve that. I deserve hell. I'm thankful for Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There, therefore, now, there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation today. No condemnation tomorrow. No condemnation the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Hey, if you're saved, thank God for your salvation that you escaped the flames of hell. Yeah, you didn't receive what you prayed for, but you could have been in hell. So you're a blessed person if you're saved tonight. That's something to shout about. Amen? That is something to shout about. There's so much for the Christian to be thankful for. And I believe that we live in a very unthankful generation because the character of an unsaved person is ingratitude. That's the character of the unsaved person is ingratitude. The unsaved person refuses to thank God for everything. Being unthankful is a character of the unsaved. Being grateful is the character of the safe. I read to you Romans chapter 1, verse 21, that is described the unsaved. Because the character of the unsaved person is full of ingratitude. And in Romans chapter 1, verse 21, it says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. See, that's the character of an unsaved person. They, uh, they don't glorify him as God. They don't give God the glory. No God for me. I don't want God's authority in my life. I want to live as I please. And... Uh, Neither were thankful, but became, in their imagine, became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. In fact, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 to describe the character of the unsaved person. If you go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, it describes the last days. And I believe we are in the last days, because the last days began when Jesus came as Messiah, and they're continuing until Jesus comes back at his second coming. So I believe we are living in the last days. And it says in here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, in verse 1, there's no also that in the last days, perilous times should come, or dangerous times should come, for men should be lovers of their own self. Covetous. This is an ugly list. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. 
Here's the word. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection. Truth breakers. False accusers. Incontinent. Fears. Despises of those that are good. Traitors. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasure. And more than lovers of God. This is, and it goes, this is an ugly list. An unsaved person has an unthankful heart towards God, and his unthankful heart produced this kind of ungodly behavior that is found in this ugly list. But that's what it leads, an unthankful heart. It leads to very ungodly, wicked behavior. You show me an, un, an ungrateful person, I show you an ungodly pattern of behavior. Because it follows that. Um, and we see here that an unsaved person, uh, this is an indictment that God gives to an unsaved person that because they are unthankful. They glorify him not as God. They became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart was darkened. They are self-lovers. Not God lovers, but self-lovers. So the character of an unsaved person is ingratitude. That's clear in the scripture. The, ca the character of an unsaved person is ingratitude. And that's, uh, that's normal behavior for them, but that should be abnormal for the believer. For the redeemed, it should be abnormal. Amen? So, in fact, go to Ephesians chapter 5. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Notice in, in, in verse 3, in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 3, look what the Apostle Paul says here. He says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be, how many times? Once, named among you as becoming saints. Amen? No Christian should be involved in fornication. Sex out of marriage. Sex is for marriage. Amen? No Christian should be involved. That, that stays within the circle of marriage. But then he goes on and says, or covetousness, let it not be once name among you become saint. And then look at verse 4. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but watch this, but rather giving of what? Giving of thanks. So Paul is talking here about the speech of a Christian. But for the child of God, his character should be gratitude, Listen, the character of a saved person should be overflowing gratitude. Uh, the unsaved person, the character is overflowing in gratitude. Selfishness, self-centered, self-lovers. But for the Christian, the character of a saved person should be overflowing gratitude. Every time the Christian opens his mouth, gratitude should be coming out. Overflowing gratitude should be coming out of the Christian's lips. That's what, it, that's what happened. We have so much to thank God for. So much. And I want to give you tonight seven reasons to be grateful. There's many more, but I just, God gave me seven. There's seven reasons tonight to be grateful. And number one, here's the first one. Number one, gratitude is a matter of obedience. Gratitude is a matter of obedience. So God commands you to be grateful. It's a command. Just like God commands you to read your Bible, go to church, tithes, read your tithes and offering, God gives you a lot of commands. But this is a command to be, to be grateful, to have gratitude as a matter of obedience. God commands you to be grateful. Let me read to you some verses. Psalm 50, verse 14. Psalm 50, verse 14. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Psalm 116, verse 7. Psalm 116, verse 7. And I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. Notice that. As I offer God thanksgiving, many times we have to do it sacrificially. It says that we have to offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Many times when we are grateful, we have to do it with sacrifice. We have to do it sacrificially. We have to do it not because we don't feel like it, even if our circumstances are not in our favor, we must, by sacrifice, by command, thank the Lord because there's more good than bad. Amen? 
Maybe right now you're thinking, yeah, Pastor, you remind me of Thanksgiving. Now I'm getting depressed. You'd be surprised how many people are depressed during Thanksgiving because something happened to them. They experience a holiday during Thanksgiving or even Christmas. And may maybe you're saying, I don't have to be, I know Thanksgiving is Thursday, Lord willing. I don't have much to be thankful for because I'm, I, I, I lost my job or I'm sick or uh, I, I heard bad news from the doctors or my marriage is in trouble or my kids are sick, or my kids' grades are, 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 are uh, their grades at school is bad, they're not behaving right, I'm getting annoyed but complaining for the teacher, or my teenage son is rebellious, my teenage daughter is rebellious. Look, as a sacrifice, as a command, we need to offer thanksgiving to God unto the Most High God. That's what it says. So it's a command. Not how you feel, God is good. God's been good to you. Come on now. Count his blessing and name them one by one. Stop focusing too much on the negative. I think it's the little book of Jude. It talks about the little book of Jude. It says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe he, in the context, he's talking about the final mercy when we get out of here, when he takes us out of this world. When, when the Lord comes back and takes us out of here to heaven, that's going to be the final mercy. Amen? I look forward for that one day, the imminent coming of Christ. But... We, there's practical lessons on that. We should always be looking for his mercies. They're new every morning. Every morning is new mercy. Today you receive new supply of mercy. Every day the Bible says he loaded us with benefits. What am I saying? Count your blessings and name them one by one. Doesn't matter how you feel. Doesn't matter the circumstances. You must do it with sacrificially. Offer the God. The Bible says unto God thanksgiving. I offer, I'm sorry, I will offer to the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. Psalm 116, verse 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything give thanks. See that? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It says, in everything give thanks. Not just for the good things that happen to you, but even the bad things. It says everything, not just the good thing, but even the bad thing. Why? Because everything that happens in your life, everything that happens in my life that you call bad, it falls under the umbrella of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. You know Romans 8, 28, right? Who knows Romans 8, 28, that promise, that wonderful, gorgeous promise, the soft pillow that you could lay your weary head on. Amen? Can you quote it, brother? I want to put you in the spot. Who got to memorize word for word? Go ahead, my brother. Quote it. Amen. All things work together for good to them that love God, that are called according to his purpose. So we must give thanks for everything because what you call bad might be good in God's eyes. And what you call good might be bad. Amen? And God can take that bad thing and turn it into something good. God uses suffering as a tool to accomplish his purposes. Amen? Trials are good for us. Read the book of James chapter 1. And find out, it will give you a positive perspective about trial, a new attitude about trial. Trials are good for us. Because a kind of joy when you fall into diverse temptation. That word temptation means trials, testings. Kind of joy, not discouragement, or joy. I think it's Peter, 1 Peter 4 something, 4, 12 or 13. He says, Beloved, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as something strange happened unto you. We, should not be, we shouldn't be so proud. We should expect trials. They're good for you. God has a purpose in trials and suffering. Amen? God has a purpose, and you should make room for them. You should not be so proud when they come in. Because God uses suffering as a tool to accomplish his purpose. In fact, go to Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. We know this story about Joseph, but we need to be reminded because many times we lose sight of God. Many times we get discouraged. We start whining. We start complaining, and we just lose on the goodness of God. We lose gratitude, amen? And look at Genesis chapter 50. One thing I admire about Joseph, he had incredible, positive attitude. He had a heart full of gratitude. 
And when I, I'm, I'm sure that Joseph was a sinner just like you and I. He was not perfect. Amen. He was a sinner just like I, but I don't hear anything negative said about Joseph in the Bible. It is positive. And he went through some severe trials, one after the other. And yeah, he kept trusting God. Amen. He kept living by faith, and the Lord prospered him, and the Lord was with him. Because he responded properly to trials. He knew that God had a purpose. He never got better at God. In fact, he got better. Trials did not make him better. It made him better. And in Genesis chapter 50, you know what happened with Joseph? With his, his own brother sold him to slavery. And, uh, and then he was in jail for rape for uh, a long time. And, and he just, God kept using him. God kept using him and he kept shining for the Lord. And in Genesis chapter 50, in, in Genesis chapter 50, in verse 20, after he revealed himself to his brothers, it says here in, in verse 20, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. There's Romans 8.28 right there. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. He saved many people from starvation. So what I'm saying is that we need to give thanks unto the Lord. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So gratitude is a matter of obedience. That's why we, one good reason we ought to be grateful. Because God commands you to be grateful and, and, and appreciate his blessings. And count his blessings and name them one by one. Number two, gratitude draws close to God. I said, number one, gratitude is a matter of obedience. God commands you to be grateful. Number two, gratitude draws close to God. This should motivate us to be grateful. Gratitude draws us close to God. If you want to get close to God, if you want to have a sense of God's presence in your life, then we need to be grateful. We need to be grateful. Let me read to you Psalm 100, verse 4. Psalm 100, verse 4, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So this verse contains an important clue as to how to get into God's presence. The clear indication is that they were instructed to enter the temple with thanksgiving. The very act of giving thanks is what enables us to enter God's gate, the outer edge of his presence, then praising him enables us to get even closer and enter into his inner courts. It refers to moving from the outer to the inner areas of God's dwelling place. Giving thanks brings us close to God. It brings us close to God. Gratitude draws close to God. We can go into his gate, his court, having direct access to him and being heard by him, my friend. It will draw you closer to him. In fact, go to Psalm 73 for a minute, verse 28. Psalm 73. Verse 28, we like to use our Bibles here. Amen. Bring your Bible to church. Amen. We come to hear the word preach. Don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. Look at Psalm 73. Look, uh, uh, I got I to gotta bring my Bible to church. I think I get some more out of it when I follow the preacher. Amen. Amen. It kind of penetrates more in my heart when I just read it and I look at it. Amen. Anybody with me on that? Amen. Thank you, Brother Mike. Psalm 73, look at verse uh, 28. Psalm 73, verse 28. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. Amen. Look, you, you get close to God. When you're close to the Lord, you're full of praise and thanksgiving. You're telling everybody how good God is to you. Amen. Uh, when I was sister Diane, and we went to, I wanted to help, be a blessing to help her out to find something in Home Depot, and here she is, giving her tracks everywhere. And she's telling the guy about how good God is to her. She's telling everybody how God good is to her. The guy, uh, the contractor, Vinny, she's driving him crazy, telling him about the goodness of God. I went there the other day to pick something, and I, he, there's a mess everywhere, dust everywhere. And I went in the bathroom, and I saw one of those John and Romans pamphlets. I said, what is that going there? It's kind of dirty a little bit. I gave it to him. I don't know if he read it, but, but amen. That's what we need to do, amen. We need to go around and tell everybody about his wonderful works. 
People that are close to, to the Lord, they're the ones that are full of thanksgiving. The ones that are not close to the Lord, they're full of whining and complaining. And they have rotten attitudes. The ones that are close to the Lord are joyful and full of praise and thanksgiving and declaring the good works of God everywhere they go. And that's what we need to do. That's exactly Psalm, Psalm 95. Psalm 95, verse 2. Psalm 95, verse 2, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. I mean, so wonderful to gather together tonight to praise the Lord and to thank him. This, was, this is going to draw us closer to God. What a blessing to come to his presence with thanksgiving. Look, if you want to come close to God, be a grateful person. That will draw you close to the Lord. That will really draw you close to the Lord when you're thankful and full of thanksgiving. Number three, I said five, seven reasons to be grateful. I said number one, gratitude is a matter of obedience. I said number two, gratitude draws close to God. I said number three, gratitude is the path to peace. Gratitude is the path to peace. Go to Philippians chapter four. Let me show you. Philippians chapter 4, I want you to notice in verse 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, look what it says. It says, rejoice in the Lord, when? Only when the circumstances are good? Always. By the way, where the apostle Paul is at when he wrote this? His circumstances are bright. Is the sun shining on his life at this time? You know where he's at, right? Where? He's in prison. He's about to be executed by Nero any time. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is what? He's near. That's why he said the Lord is near. By the way, do you feel the Lord is near? He's not far from us. Maybe it's ingratitude, maybe it's sin in our life that causes us to distance ourselves from the Lord and we don't feel his presence. But when we're close to him, when we're right with him, we're full of joy and we're full of thanksgiving and we feel his hand. Amen? We feel his presence. That's how I want to live on the God's presence. And it says, the Lord is our hand, he's near us. And then he says, be careful, don't be anxious or worried for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding should keep your heart and mind to Christ Jesus. So gratitude is the path to peace. This is a marvelous ingredient here in this verse for us to have God's peace. Paul gives us three things here to receive, to experience God's peace. First, be careful for nothing. What is the first thing? Don't worry. Don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Worrying, you heard me say this, and I'll say it again. Worrying is a sin. S-I-N. Because it's lack of trust of God. And it blows my mind that we could trust the Lord with our, with our eternal soul. And we say we're safe forever and we're locked out of hell. And we take God as promise, but we can't trust him with the circumstances in our life. We doubt him. So, Three things to experience God peace, not worry, be careful for nothing, and then you pray. Verse 6, but in everything by prayer and supplication, and then you give thanks. You see the thanksgiving there? And you give thanks with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And then what are the results? When we don't worry, when we take everything to the Lord in prayer, and when we're full of thanksgiving, we thank God in everything, what are the results? And the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The, the phrase there is the peace of God. You heard me say this many before. It doesn't say the peace with God. It says peace of God. You heard me say this before, and I'm, I'll repeat it again. Okay, again, repetition is the key of learning, right? I want to drill it in your heart. The peace with God. He didn't say peace with God. The peace with God, we get it when we get saved. When you're born again as a Christian, guess what you get? Peace with God. Romans 5.1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then, so all of us, if you're saved tonight, thank God for salvation. You're locked out of hell, amen? 
If you're saved tonight, thank God every day for salvation. Every day, thank God for your salvation. Because you don't deserve to be saved. Thank God for your salvation, amen? And you know what? Praise the Lord, Daniel, you got saved. To God be the glory. Hallelujah, my brother. Hallelujah. And he told me when he got saved, he goes, man, with tears in his eyes, he said, I feel lighter. That's what happened. The burden of sin is lifted up. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel lighter too. And when I confess my sin every day, I feel lighter. I feel fresh spiritually. Amen. When you keep short accounts with God, and you come clean with the Lord. That's another message yourself. But peace with God when we're saved, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But when, when, when you don't worry, when you rejoice in the Lord always, when you pray, you take everything in prayer, and you give thanks to the Lord in everything, that's how you get the peace of God. You see what I'm saying? You could have peace with God because you're saved, your salvation is settled, and thank God for that, but are you experiencing the peace of God? Or you, are you, or, or you worry too much? And look, worrying with your sin can disturb that peace of God. I said that again. Worrying with your sin can disturb that peace of God. A lot of Christians don't have the peace of God. They have peace with God in salvation, but not in their trust in God. And God's peace is not ruling their heart. Paul says the peace of God should keep your heart and mind to Christ Jesus. The word keep there is a military word. It means to guard. It has the thought of a fortress. It has the thought of a wall. God's people will build a wall, a fortress around your heart and mind so that worries and anxiety and stress cannot get in your life. Amen? That's what I want. I want the peace of God because it's, it's like, a, like a castle. It's, it's like a shield, like a protection from stress and anxiety. Amen? So we got to trust the Lord with our circumstances. Gratitude is the path to peace. Don't worry. Rejoice always. Pray. Give thanks unto the Lord. That's how you experience this peace of God that passes all understanding. And then, number four, gratitude is the will of God. Gratitude is the will of God. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I love to hear those pages turn, amen? We got visitors that come here that bring their Bibles. Shame on those who've been here for a long time don't have their Bibles. Amen? Shame on you. And look, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. It says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we know that. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the center of God's will. I don't want to be out of God's will. You're in trouble when you're out of God's will. I think you want to be protected, be in the center of God's will. How do you be in the center of God's will? Be, be joyful. Be, be grateful. Be full of gratitude. Uh, be full of trust in God. Be a, a man or a woman of prayer. Don't worry about anything. And that is the will of God. Because being thankful is, gratitude is the will of God. Number five, gratitude. Listen to this one, number five. I'm going to give you seven. Number five, gratitude is an evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Gratitude is an evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, when I see somebody always rejoicing, they're always praising God. I mean, you like to be around those people. They just make you feel good. They just, they're just uplifting. They're happy all the time. And, and you, they, you have a bad day, you're, you feel better. You feel encouraged, amen? You know why? They're filled with the Spirit. They're walking in the Spirit. But then you got the grouchy ones, they're walking in the flesh. They're not filled with the Spirit because one of the evidence that you are filled with the Spirit is not speaking in tongues. It's not speaking gibberish. It's not sounding like a, tur a turkey gobbler. No, my friend, it's being full of thanksgiving. Amen? It's not sounding, making this syllable nonsense sounds that sounds like a monkey house. No, my friend, you're walking in the Spirit, you're full of thanksgiving. I'll prove it to you. 
Ephesians chapter 5. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, And be not drunk with wine, for it's, in, it's excess. And then he makes the contract, but be filled with the Spirit. Don't be controlled by liquor. Be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Just like it's a sin to get drunk, it's a sin to not be filled with the Spirit. Because if you're not filled with the Spirit, you're walking in the flesh. And they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8.8. 8. And then he goes on, he explains what are the manifestations, what are the evidence of somebody who's filled with the Spirit. He goes on, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart in the Lord. Somebody who's filled with the Spirit, man, they got a song, they, 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 they sing, they come to church and they open the lid and they sing. They grab the hymn book and they sing. They're in tune, by the way, God uses the, the singing to prepare your heart for the preaching. And when I don't see people tune in, grabbing hymn book and singing, they're not getting nothing out of the preaching because they're not tuned in. And people that are filled with the Spirit, they come to church to get something from God, and they give God their heart to the music. Amen? They start singing and, and, and singing along when, when Brother Jerry's leading and singing. And then look what it says. Verse 20, giving what? This is a person that's walking, giving thanks always for all things unto God. And the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So gratitude is evidence of being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit means we, that you allow the Holy Spirit to control your life, your action, your attitude, your conduct, and your speech. If you're crabby, if you're cranky, if you're complaining, not joyful all the time, you're not filled with the Spirit. That's obvious. You're not filled with the Spirit. You're full of yourself. You're a self-lover, you're, you're self-centered, you're full of yourself. And that's clear in the scriptures. And look, we need to be filled with the Spirit, not full of ourselves. You don't have to be full of rotten attitude where everything bothers you and you're just irritated and you irritate everybody else. No, we ought to be full of joy, full of the Spirit, full of gratitude. Because gratitude is the evidence of being filled with the Spirit. Number six, gratitude reflects the heart of Jesus. Gratitude reflects the heart of Jesus. Look at, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We use these verses when we uh, partake of the Lord's Supper. We do that once a month here. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I want you to notice in verse 23, Gratitude reflects the heart of Jesus. Don't you want to be like Jesus? Don't you want to resemble Jesus Christ? Gratitude reflects the heart of Jesus. And look what it says in, in verse 23. He says, I have received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was what? He was what? Betrayed, so he didn't have a good day. Circumstance doesn't look good, right? He would just betray by his best friend Judas. That he called him my best friend, my friend. Same night when she was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given what? Thanks. And break it and say, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. This do remember of me. I mean, he was facing agony on the cross, he was just betrayed by Judas. And he still had a grateful heart. He still had a grateful heart. Isn't that a, a lesson for us? Isn't that an example for us? The right to reflect the heart of Jesus. Jesus was all through his life, Christ is constantly thanking his father. Thanking his father. He's about to go to the cross. They mock him. They ridicule him. He was betrayed. And his heart is full of thanksgiving. Look at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Verse 21, Luke chapter 10. Look at Luke chapter 10. Verse 21. Luke chapter 10, verse 21. And in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I, what? Thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Look at John chapter 11. John chapter 11. 
John chapter 11. John chapter 11, look at verse 41. Verse 41, John chapter 11, verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I what? Thank thee that thou hast heard me. So what I'm saying, all through the life of Christ, he was constantly thanking his Father. Gratitude reflects the heart of Jesus. Can others see Jesus in you because of your thankful heart? Can others see Jesus in you because of your thankful heart? Number seven, last. Gratitude get us ready for heaven. Gratitude get us ready for heaven. You know what's the main thing in heaven? The main thing in heaven is people praising and honoring and giving thanksgiving to the Lamb. That's the main thing in heaven. That's what's going on in heaven. Amen? People are just praising the Lamb and giving honor and thanksgiving to the Lamb of God that was slain at the cross, at Calvary, the old rugged cross, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Look at Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. Gratitude get us ready for heaven. Revelation chapter 5, if you notice in verse 11, it says, and beheld, and I beheld, John says, Revelation 5, 11, I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the bees and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. It was a huge number of them, a number too large to count, innumerable numbers, too large to count. And it says there, Verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Verse 13, every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such are in the seed and all that are in them heard I say, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever, and the four be say, Amen, and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. That's the theme in heaven, amen? The elders represent the church, the angels, and you know what? The angels are worshiping God, praising the Lamb. And you know what? You know, in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible it says that angels have been redeemed. Only sinful men have been redeemed. But that angel, they observed, and they saw the work of Christ on the cross. They saw how he saved sinful man, how he transformed sinful man, how they were cleansed by the blood of Christ. And they're rejoicing over that. They saw that work, and they're rejoicing. The angels, they never experienced redemption. How much more that we, that we experience redemption should praise him with thanksgiving for the lamb that was slain. Amen? Are we going to let the angels be more excited than us? When they never experienced redemption, we experienced redemption. Look at Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, and, they, and they, they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seal thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Anybody has been redeemed by the blood of Christ tonight? Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So we see here, gratitude to get us ready for heaven. That's the theme in heaven. Praise and thanksgiving to the Lamb of God. He saved us. He redeemed us by his blood. I mean, there's going to be a heavenly choir. What a heavenly choir that will be. Thousands and thousands and thousands. I mean, all those saved musicians in heaven together singing. Gratitude. Get us ready for heaven. I want to get ready for heaven. Amen? I want to get some more practice down here. So when I get to heaven, heaven will not be boring. It will not be boring, trust me. So look, we need to be grateful people. Because the character of an unsaved person is ingratitude. Does that describe you? Us people ought to be praising God. You, 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 we ought to be shouting through the roofs. 
Amen? Stand on our feet, every head bow. Let not just be another message. Put it to practice, amen? Ask God to forgive you because you are ungrateful. When was the last time you thanked God? Did you thank God today? Did your name is blessing? And then one by one, did you took at least five minutes to thank him for his blessing, how good God is to you? Did you give him thanks for the breath you have, for the food you have, for the home and the shelter? Although he hears us complaining and whining all the time. Which one are you? As the music, every head bowed, every eye closed, the music plays, and we give the invitation. Maybe some of you, if you got saved, hey, don't be ashamed. Let other people know that you got saved. That's the best thing ever happened to you. May the Lord raise up grateful people, Lord. Lord, use the message tonight, dear God. Convict us of our ingratitude, Lord. Convict us. As the music plays, the invitation is open for you.